Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello and welcome to Footy Judge Mo, people. This is going to be a heated debate. This is going to be another debate. Of course, if you're here, hit that like button now. If you're watching this on the replay, you got to like the video before we start because this is going to be epic. I don't want to stop it many times to tell you to like the video, people. Listen, we're going to talk about Trento, Real Madrid. Is that actually an, a thing? Is that actually something that can happen? We don't know. We don't know. But we'll talk about it with the, with the guests, of course. And we'll talk about the title race. Why these guys, nobody has chest. Where did the chest go? Why is everybody that we talk to is saying, we are the underdogs? We'll talk about that as well. And who are actually favorites to win this title? Are they still Man City, as Opta said, or is it Liverpool or Arsenal? And also, I wanted to speak about Spurs. Because everybody's speaking about the three Spurs games are the title deciders. Who can Spurs beat? Who can Spurs take points off? And also, the last part, if we have time, we'll talk about where does Spurs start next year? Are they equal to Arsenal? Can they compete for the title? Or is it still a long way to go? But I'm here with a fantastic panel, of course. For the first time on the channel, actually, we have done tons of shows together. But the first time, of course, is George, of course. You guys know him from the football terrace. You guys know him from many, many other channels, of course. And I'm so happy that he finally agreed. And I'm humbled that he's here because he finally gave me his time. I begged him many times, but he said no. <laughs> And finally, he's Not like, yeah, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some time to come on your channel. So he's here. Mo, Mo never had to here. beg. We, we, we need to make sure. Mo never had to beg. Mo is a good friend. And um, yeah, it's, it's good to be here. George Durek Diaries. Some people know me as, um, yeah, Spurs fan. I, I'm, I'm, I do not share the same sentiments as some other Spurs fans that come on this channel, but um, you, you'll get to hear what I have to say today. I, I guess yes. so. And of course, Dawood, long time no see, my brother, fasting and giving us his time. Big up Dawood, big up Dawood for being here. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on again. Um, I, I think this is the first time I've done like a morning show. Morning, but like an afternoon show with you. Usually it's yeah. um, a reaction, yeah. match day reaction yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but yeah, appreciate you having me on. Uh, hopefully it'll be an entertaining stream. The, these are more chill until they're not. Like yeah. yesterday, until they're not. And Mike Das is back, people. With popular demand, Mike Das representing Liverpool after a 28-hour drive from New York no, to no, no, no. Los Angeles. 40, uh, 44 hours. 44-hour drive from New York to Los 14, Angeles. So, so it was 14 states. It was 2,800 miles. Imagine if I drove from New York City to London. Pretty much the same exact thing. Um so I, I drove pretty much across the entire continental United States. Yes. And last but not least, the biggest guest of the show, of course, who is absolutely different than everybody else. The one and only, of course, you will see him. It's Vator, of course. The one and only Vator, of course. And of course, he's got to do his thing. Big up, Vator, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. I mean, it's been a minute, Mo. I always enjoy our combos and the panel you got today. I know it's going to be fire. So let's get into it, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be absolutely brilliant. And let me just start by the super chats, of course, that the guys big up Jerome Dublin for Jerome supporting the channel before we even started the show. Big up footy judge Mo and the panel. I didn't vote because these are three strong teams. And none are underdogs. And we'll talk about that, Jerome, because, well, some Liverpool fans big to differ and Arsenal fans saying that they're underdogs. I haven't seen a Man City Stupid. fan say, no, actually, Hamza always tells me he's an underdog because he's third. But we'll talk about that as well. And Thank Nilot Pal, appreciate you, Nilot Pal, for the support for the channel. Mo also talking, Cancelo calling out Pep. He calls out everybody. Pe Pe everybody calls out Pep. Eto called out Pep. Ibrahimovic called out Pep. Everybody. Anybody that has a big ego that it was coached under Pep calls out Pep. But it is what it is, Nilot Pal. We'll talk about... I'm actually going to do a video about the Cancelo move to Arsenal, actually. Because this actually might be a thing. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But big up, everybody. Of course, get your super chats in. I'm going to stop in the middle like we did yesterday. I'm going to get all the super chats together. We'll respond to every single one of them in about every 20 minutes or something. So if you're going to get a super chat related to the topic... I'm going to stop the topic and do your super chat 
And if not, we'll stop in the middle and we'll do sections for Super Chats as well. But also there is one place to start, people. Is Trent to... And I'm going to actually start with George about Trent thing, right? Because we were speaking be, before we started the show about Trent going to Real Madrid. Is that actually something that you can see happen at all? They offer... They, they are... Liverpool is 75 million just to get that to tell people what to what we know. The reports are saying that they're gonna offer Liverpool about 75 million pounds, one year left on his contract. They're gonna offer him a massive wage and they're gonna offer him a long-term contract because they want to replace Carvajal. Do you see that happening at all? I, I, I see there's a big chance of this happening. Um, as 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 we all know, Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp's leaving. I hear the murmurs, oh, Trent can be captain of Liverpool and so on and so forth. But like he said, he's pretty much won everything there is to win with that team already. That that team has they've they've already reached the peak of what it, what it is gonna become. And like you know, Mo Salah's getting old, Van Dyke's getting old, Mane's already left. Um, obviously all of your court Fabinho is already left. Like that core group of the height of that team, which was amazing, by the way. It's no longer there, and they're, they're all gonna slowly start leaving their way. Trent, he's the youngest of the lot. Um, being what is he 24 now? 25. 25. So, um, he, he's in that time of his career where it's he, he's gonna reach his prime where, where this is the time where he can make the move because he's not gonna be able to make this move at 29, 29 30. Let's get it right. Real Madrid's not gonna be looking at a 29 30 year old. They're looking at someone that's young, that's trying to fit in with the core group that they've got. Bellingham, Chouameni, Kamavinga, Mbappe, Hendrik, Rodrigo, Vinicius. These are players that Trent's played against. He knows how good they are. But this is a dynasty, a Galacticos team that we haven't seen in a long time that I really think is going to be a big opportunity for him to join. So like you said, Romaja are capitalising off the fact that Liverpool, uh, Klopp's leaving. He's going to have, uh, like I said, a year or a year or so left on his contract. And he's going to be surrounded by, like I said, the likes of Van Dijk. Their future's in, in question. Mo Salah, his future's in question. That Liverpool team's not going to look the same as it was. And you know what? As a Tottenham fan, I know better than other people. Harry Kane had this chance three or four years ago. I mean, you rival fans all got onto him. You said, you should have left Spurs years ago. You should have left when, 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 when the team was good and everyone else started to fall apart. Trent, yes, Trent is going to be in this position that if he stays, he may be the best of a pack of a team that's not going to be achieving what they once was. So this is this is the chance of his life to move, to move and go to Champions League. Obviously, he can give it another year. I reckon he could probably do another season in this Liverpool team, see how it goes. But after another year, I, I think this is the chance, isn't it? It, it? it definitely has some strong legs to this movement. Mike, what? My response to what George is saying is that you are comparing Spurs who have, who don't win trophies. I did wait, not, but I it's did, not I a, it's not a, it's not a dig. Time. It's not a dig. I'm saying a fact to a oh, team yeah. because what I'm hearing from you is that you are but assuming. Not praise Liverpool. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are assuming from that the the, the 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 monologue you said. All right, which is great. Actually, it's great until you get one point. You are assuming that Liverpool won't win trophies after yeah. Evan Klopp. Ah, because, okay. So you are building all of this as Liverpool. This is it. They had their peak and they had their time, and that's it. Which is from ridiculous. Now, Which is from ridiculous. now on, eh, it's not okay. that ridiculous. It's very ridiculous. It's very ridiculous. Well, when you when you only won twelve, like as you said, you went thirty years without a Premier League, and then you won one, and you still not won it since. It's not ridiculous to say you're going to go on a drought again. You're still on a drought currently. It's been a couple of years. If you win it this season, cool, yeah. But if you don't win it this year and you go another three, four years, then you're already in like a six or seven year drought. And then you're, we're talking about a team that hasn't won anything, won a big trophy, and how many? How long? Now so, I'm understanding what do you mean? George's argument. By the way, now yeah, it's ma it makes a lot of sense. Now it makes we're sense how why he's saying. Trent has to go. It's a big opportunity. I'm like, this is Liverpool Football Club. They challenge for Champions Leagues. They won Champions Leagues lately. They won the Premier League. But he's assuming yeah. that it's done. It's, it's, this you, is it. This you, is know, you know why? You know why? It's because, and George is speaking a lot of sense. You haters in the chat. I don't read the chat, but I'm assuming there's a lot of hate in the chat right now. Listen, he's pointing out some key things. It's Real Madrid. What club has Liverpool come up to and failed often in Champions League? Real Madrid. Yeah. 
right? So it's not like it's anyone else, but it's Real who's calling and saying. Oh, wait, Vera, I also forgot to say this hasn't mm. this isn't new to Liverpool. Michael Owen, Shabby Alonso, they both left to go to Real Madrid to join that same Galacticos team that they were building. This is that same time they're doing it again. They're coming yeah. back to poach yeah. your players, yeah. and it's gonna happen. No, it's not. No, it's not. Mike, 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 Mike. Just let's let's hear the different points. I know emotionally you're you right. Don't you're it. right. I I am waiting for you guys to get your points in, and yeah. then I will drop the gavel and just bring everyone back to reality. So All go right. ahead. All right, but we're we're not speaking out of emotion. We're speaking out of facts right now. And yeah, we're, we're and I and I will. Go All ahead. right, we're pointing out what Real Madrid are. Real Madrid, sure. Liverpool. There's a difference. We all can accept that, right? Yes. There's they all have 15 Champions Leagues, yes. I believe they have 14. But when we when it comes down to who is the where's the destination? Where does a player like Trent go? If Real Madrid come asking, are you interested? He's going. And he's going for a lot he's going for a lot of reasons that George brought up. You've lost to Real Madrid many times. On top of that, the success between the two clubs, we can all fairly say, has been a lot more consistent at Real Madrid than Liverpool. Klopp, amazing manager. I won't take anything away from him. But he's leaving. So during your glory time, it's under him. There's a lot of questions. Does Trent want to stick around with all these questions at age 25? Does he want to see whether he can continue to win when my manager remains in this league, which is going to make it damn near impossible? And then you see the rise of an Arteta. Klopp is leaving for a reason. Trent should leave for those same reasons as well. Because the consistency at Liverpool, I don't think it's going to remain there. And we have we have evidence that it hasn't been. That it hasn't been. You've got FSG that you keep complaining about not investing properly. You, you've got a great manager that's now leaving. I think if Trent is going to bet on his future for continued success, it's better placed at Real Madrid than Liverpool. I love my say quickly before. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say this trend as an honor to Real Madrid, I think, is a rumor where Liverpool are unsure of who they're gonna get as a manager. Jurgen Klopp is obviously leaving, and Real Madrid, every every player now is linked to Real Madrid. Erling Haaland linked to Real Madrid, Mbappe, Trent Alexander Arnold. Are they gonna sign 10 players this summer? They, they, they just can't fit that many players in their squad. And if Trent wants to go to Real Madrid, I don't think Liverpool can stop him because that is something that is that will take him to another level. That is that will guarantee him a couple of league titles and a couple of Champions Leagues when he retires. And Liverpool can't guarantee him that. Liverpool right now and a transition period. If they get Xabi Alonso, he'll need two seasons. I'd probably say to challenge for the Premier League. He'd probably need around two seasons because he'll want to rebuild the squad that he wants. Because you, you, when do you ever see a new manager come in? And win the league title in the first two years, except for Pep Guardiola. No other manager does it. So he'll and Liverpool don't spend the money where they're gonna accelerate that transition. Liverpool are not gonna spend 300, 400 million pounds to get in five, six, seven players that Xabi Alonso wants. They're gonna have to go for a, a structure where they they'll have to sell players to get players. Because um uh, uh, FSG are self self-sufficient uh, owners, so they want to want they will they will want to buy players by selling players. So if they sell Trenaz and Arnold for 100 million pounds, for example, that would give them enough money to get in two free players. So that will help Xabi Alonso with his uh, if he comes in with his uh, you know transition. So the rumors for me, if I was a Liverpool if I was a Liverpool fan, I would actually uh, cash in for Trent because you've got someone like Conor Bradley. As an upcoming right back, Trent Alexander-Arnold. If you get 100, 120 million pounds for Trent Alexander-Arnold, you can reinvest that money. I remember Liverpool fans were devastated when they lost Coutinho, but when they lost Coutinho, who did they bring in? They brought in Virgil Van Dijk and they brought in Allison. If Liverpool can trust Michael Edwards was coming back now, so if Liverpool can trust their scouting network and say that if we sell Trent for 100 million pounds, 120 million pounds, we can trust Michael Edwards to bring in two upcoming stars. Who are gonna, you know, replace replace Trent in positions that we need? Liverpool need a, another centre back. Liverpool need a couple more midfielders, and I think right back Trent is an amazing right back. He's a world class right back, but I think he's you can see that since he's been injured, Conor Bradley has done, you know, he's done a job at right back. He's been absolutely amazing. So is 
For me, if I was a Liverpool fan, I would have been dev- I wouldn't be devastated if Trent went to Real Madrid. And if you get 120 million pounds for him, I'd I'd cash in right now. Okay. Um, listen, the the only point here that I will somewhat agree with is for 120, I would say a conversation needs to be had. For 120, for 75, that's just that's just disrespectful. That's absolutely disgusting. Con- considering the potential that Trent has. And the fact that he is probably, he's without a doubt top two passers in the league. The only person who you can even put in the in the conversation with him is Kevin De Bruyne, who, who probably edges his uh, edges Trent out um, as uh, as as the best in the league. But Trent can also be a world class midfielder, and I've always believed that he is a midfielder, not a right back. And honestly, when he inverts, he pretty much plays as that. Um, I think that this is just down to the fact that we're in an international break and everyone is linked to Real Madrid, just like Dau said. Um, I mean, Alfonso Davies apparently has already agreed to the contract. Like, yeah. people are just bored. We're in dead time. There's nothing to talk about. So what do you do? You throw out a story like this. The difference here, right, when we look at players like Coutinho leaving, Suarez leaving, Fernando Torres leaving, Chabi Alonso uh, leaving – those are all international players. Those players were not born in Liverpool. Those players were not ball boys for Liverpool. Those players did not play in the youth team for Liverpool. Those players have not been in the city of Liverpool for their entire life growing up. Yeah, but listen, Michael Owen, a diamond doesn't. If Trent leaves, whatever, right? Like, this is basically, my perspective is this. To me, this is a stupid conversation because this is all based on complete assumption. And if he leaves down the road, then I'll, I'll react the same way that I reacted to Coutinho leaving or Torres leaving or Suarez leaving. I'll deal with it as it comes to me. But right now, it doesn't make any sense for Trent to leave this team. He's 25 years old. A new manager comes in. He, he could be playing in midfield. He has an amazing team around him. There's things to build off of. And if you go to Real Madrid, you're just another star in a pot of stars, right? What? I'm just I'm, I'm just I'm just another big fish in a pot with bigger fish. Trent Alexander Arnold is not going to be the centerpiece of Real Madrid. In fact, he's probably not even going to be the third or fourth or fifth centerpiece. He's probably like the bottom half of the top eleven when it comes to who are the superstars in this team based on current talent and just current market value at the time. Okay. So it doesn't make any sense. But for the right price, obviously every player is is worth selling. For 110 million, like that's a lot of money. And honestly, you could do a lot with it. And if he wants no, to go, not a lot of well, money. With all the respect, if Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo are that, and you, if your valuing, if your valuation of Trent is as much as Caicedo and Enzo and Declan Rice, well, personally, listen, uh, I, I said, I, I said, <laughs> this is this is what I, I want said, to get my. I, I I said a conversation is worth having. I didn't say that I would do it. Right? You open I the conversation. Because you if, open if you, those conversations, I actually point. have another question to throw out there before before we go on. And guys, we got over about four hundred people here right off the bat, and we aren't even on two hundred likes. That's absolutely atrocious. Uh, I know you guys are enjoying the conversation. I know some some of you guys can't believe what we're saying, but it doesn't matter. Just hit the like. You hate us, you like us. Just hit the like button, people. Let's get to two hundred likes. I gotta have a question to Vader and everyone else. Two years, Pep leaves. Do you think Foden leaves? If Ramadan is no. calling. No, two years this Foden. Right. Foden, 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 Foden is 23. Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. Foden yeah. is 23 years old. Pep leaves in two years. Ramadan comes where, calling for Foden. Where's, where's Foden he going? Leave. Where, where is he going? Because I just, I just gave you. I just gave you. Good. Real Madrid eventually will need a right winger. Right? So Foden, 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 Foden will not why want to be the right why, winger. Why, 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 why Trent would leave and Foden I, I will think, leave? I'll, you're asking Vayer the question? I right? think the difference yes. is... Yes, yes. Okay, so George one... is frozen or is only me or... No, 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 he's good. He's good. Oh, wait, yeah, no, I'm back now, I'm back. Um, yeah, no, I was just going to say, I think the difference is is that Foden has, he's achieved a lot of success at Manchester City. And even when Pep leaves, we know that the Manchester City system is going to throw everything it can to continue to sustain that success. Like, like Daoud pointed out, FSG is going to have a very different way to run it, which is probably a more sustainable model. But we all know with how Manchester City roll. They're, they're, they're a... They're a high roller. They do it completely different to every other team. They're, they're just going to go out there and throw money at the problem. No, we're not. So no, we're regardless, not. Wait, wait, so regardless, even... No, you will, Vio, because once no, Pep we... leaves, 
just like every other team, just like you called out and, and said that when Klopp leaves, there's going to be an impact. There's going to be an impact on Manchester City. When I Pep agree with your impact, but you talking about City throwing money at is where I'm like, no, we're not. You, you will, because you will have players leave. But I, I ju just like um, uh, the Liverpool fan pointed out, that it will be the international players that leave. But a Foden at Manchester City, I feel like he knows that he's going to continue, con continually have success there. Trent doesn't yeah. know that with his future. And that's what? the reason he would stay. Not because so, I don't think because he has some like unsustained loyalty to be a Man City. Like let, let's let's players nah, aren't as nah, loyal as people think. Hold on, this one. Hold on. Money, Hold on. Hold on. No. Money Can I ask something no, no. to George? Roma then... is the biggest club in the world. Vitor, Vitor, I need to ask George something. A, a yes or no question, right, George? But we'll talk about it later. When club leaves, do you think Spurs with Ange will be better than Liverpool? Just say yes or no question. That's a lot of variables in place. Just a lot. Yes or no question, bro. Next season, you literally said that Klopp is gonna leave and the downfall is gonna, gonna start. No, I, I said there, there will, yeah, there will be a shift back. They're gonna take a step back, but I don't know how far a step forward Tottenham's gonna. Oh, take. all so right. I, 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 very, very okay. I like this answer. It's very yeah. objective answer. I like this answer. Go ahead, Vito. Sorry. Why does everyone Look. just assume there's gonna be a step back? I, I, I want. Is, let me hear Vito's no. argument. Yeah. I'm gonna answer about, your about question. Foden because, yeah. and then I'm gonna go to Mike to end this segment before we go on. Because I'll answer your question with regards to Foden. All right, the reason why it's very different, and George was partially right, but him talking about splashing cash to to make everything work, I disagree. But in terms of recognizing that there's a consistency with Manchester City's planning board, owners, vision. We can see that there's a difference between City and FSG and Liverpool. So if one if one player is going to be like, do I leave after Pep because I think things are going to crumble? Do I leave after Klopp because I think things are going to crumble? It's more sided that things are going to go bad Liverpool side than Manchester City side. Now, the re another reason why I think Foden remains at City is because he's a midfielder. The impact that he would have in the game and the team – is very different than a. Is he a right back, Mike? Is he a, is he a potential midfielder? I don't know what Trent is these days. But Foden is going two years from now. He's going to be the face of City. He's going to be that midfielder. So if it continues with him, Holland, hmm, he's not going anywhere. Can I? He's uh, not going anywhere. Can Can I say one thing about because you asked what Trent is? Trent I don't know is, what Trent is. I keep being I, I, told he's a right back. Nobody knows. Okay, nobody knows. But Trent is the player. Who you adjust your system to accommodate him because he's a game winner at Liverpool, Foden not at Real Madrid. Is at Foden, I'm talking. You're talking about Liverpool. Mm -hmm. You your your argument was Foden at City is a midfielder. He's gonna be this and that. Trent Alexander Arnold, and if you disagree, you can tell me. Is someone who you adjust your system to accommodate him. You play a midfielder to cover him. Of course, Does that makes sense. We've seen it for years. So your argument is invalid. No, because no, no. Trent is a superstar. He's an no, no, X no, factor. No, 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 no. He's not an X factor. He's he's a hybrid. He's we don't know what he is. What? We don't know what he is. Here you go. We don't, we don't. Here, here you go. Here you go. So I'm I'm bringing the answer out. You don't think that Trent is at the level of Phil Foden. You don't. Two in terms two of years X factor. Now. Don't, 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 I don't, uh, right now. Two years Wait. from now. I, I want to ask you a question. Do you think Phil Foden? And Trent Alexander Arnold at the same level in terms of the effect they have on the game. Yes. Okay, so why are you saying that Foden is an X Factor and Trent isn't? Trent can be an X Factor. He's in hybrid, but I don't know what he is. I can't say he's a right back. I can't say that he's an inverted midfielder. I don't know what to call him. But is he an X Factor? Yes. And when you were talking about the coverage or you adjust teams for him, we've been seeing it for years. We can all, Mike, you can hold your hand up. Trent isn't the best defender. That's why he's had coverage from Jordan Henderson um, in past years. That's why you, when you guys talk about your starting 11, you think of who can cover Trent when he starts going inverted where he bombs up the field. We know his deficiencies. But I'm talking about player for player at each individual club. I can see Trent saying, you know what, my future at Liverpool or my future at Real Madrid, I'm probably better off going to Real Madrid. The different, the different question between Foden and Real Madrid, again, there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot that's going to be decided in this in this leg in the Champions League. I think it looks like you know what, I can remain at City because for the past few years 
City keep being the favorites for everything that they play in. Mike? Okay. Um, first and foremost, it's not that Trent is a poor defender. It's that this the system does not properly accommodate for a traditional right back. So the man is inverted. He's out of position. And he's also not... He's also not a natural right back either. His his worst aspect of defending is just simply positioning. When he's in midfield and it's transitional defense, he actually has very solid numbers when it comes to one-on-one -on -one duels and when it comes to um, tackles. But when he's playing right back and he's out of position and another midfielder is forced to cover for him, that's where you have problems. But anyone would have a problem there. Anyone. Anyone in the world. And you see it in Liverpool because we've had the same problems without Trent there. So it's not a Trent problem. It's a system problem. Okay? But I will say his positional awareness sometimes is poor when he's playing right back. Okay? Which is why I never said that he's a right back. He's I'm, a midfielder. I'm, I'm cool I, 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 I've said this since the Champions League final versus Real Madrid. He should be in the midfield. There is no excuse about it. And if you're a new manager coming in and you see what Trent has – that's what you have to be thinking. It's not, oh my God, Connor Bradley's here. I don't need to get back anymore. It's, oh my God, Connor Bradley's here. I can put Trent in midfield. I can save a hundred million pounds by not buying two other players because I have a player already who can occupy that position. It would be a stupid financial decision to get rid of a player with that much potential when I don't have to go into the market and replace him. I simply put him in midfield, and if it doesn't work, whatever. Sign him to a three-year deal. If it doesn't work, you really think that Real Madrid is just going to not knock because he's 26 and not 25? Absolutely not. If they're this interested in him now, you bring in another manager. You put him in midfield. If he fails and falls on his face, you give him to Real Madrid, and you say, you know what? It's not my problem anymore. Maybe I lost $20 million out of that, but it's $20 million. Who cares? I'll sell you. I'll sell you on for a million. There you go. But it would just it would be such a stupid decision for an incoming manager to get rid of a star player like that. Michael yeah. Edwards would not do that. He would not mm. take the star boy of Liverpool, the, the 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 actual scouser in the team, and simply sell him because 120 million was brought. That doesn't make any intuitive or logical sense when it comes to a sporting director like Michael oh. Edwards. And, and I just like I think that. There's a lot of assumptions here. People are like, oh, Liverpool are going to drop off. We're not going to be successful. There's no guarantee of that. Yes, maybe when it comes to a like, you know, on, historical – Hold on. Allow me to finish. When it comes to some historical aspect, you can say, well, managers typically need a, a season or two to adjust. Sure, typically. But that doesn't mean I'm just going to rule out the possibility that a manager could come in and keep things seamlessly, move, uh, seamlessly moving forward because it happened before. I'm not just going to assume the worst. I'm not just going to say that oh, we're going to be shit because Klopp's leaving. Like that, that's a that's a loser Don't mentality. Say that you're going to be crap, but there's going to be a, a drop off. You guys are saying that. No, no, no. I'm saying that that's not a guarantee. Like you guys are all sitting here acting like Liverpool that's guaranteed. Fan, as a Liverpool fan, let's not act like before Klopp. You didn't come from trash. You you guys were battling for Europa Leagues with. Um, but that um, was in the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, hold on. So you you've gone through the, even with Rafa Benitez, you you guys wasn't good for a long time. Like you you guys but have that's gone through the past. That's the past. Has, has Klopp been past. has Klopp been oh, doing this magic today? Time or is one one at a time, one at a time because of this is this is today. Like you guys are talking about the past, okay? This is before we won everything. This is before we had the talent that we have today. Like, like I, I just, I, I refuse to compare a club today to a club eight years ago. That doesn't make any sense. That would be like comparing like an iPhone to the first rotary telephone. Okay, okay, it makes okay. absolutely no sense in my mind. It's not logical. I see the team that we have. I see the potential that we have. If you bring in a good enough manager. There doesn't have to be that big of a transition period. Things can seamlessly move forward, especially with the proper sporting director and the proper person running the club Mike, and the proper manager. The talent is there. Like, much, it, I, I'm, I'm not going to just assume. Mike, how like, much I, credit does Klopp get the for, the, for your, your winning ways? The manager always deserves the majority of the credit, considering the fact that he is the person who's putting the players out there and creating the tactics 100%. But the so players, my, my point is, the players are also the players. I, I hear you. I hear you. My point is look at Klopp 100%. All right. Look at what he's been able to do, his effectiveness, and what he means. He's 100%. I don't care whatever manager you go out and get. I don't care. And maybe you don't rate Klopp at this level. But if Klopp at 100, at 100%, and, and how great he's been, the next manager you come in, in my humble opinion, 
I think they're 80, 75% of what Klopp is. Them as managers are 80, 75, 70%. So there's a drop off in terms of quality of manager into the system that you're talking about. Unless you don't credit Klopp that much. Unless you can just take out any manager and get the success. But I think Klopp is at levels. So when Klopp is now out of here, I think Liverpool drops. That, that, listen, that's based off the assumption that we would play the Jurgen Klopp way. You, listen, you technically, on a historical basis, you are correct. Whoever comes in would be 70, 80% of what Klopp is. But that's not to say that that's a guaranteed fact. That's all I'm trying to say. That's not yeah. that 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 is not None guaranteed. So we yeah, Ch- let's not get hung up on the Chabi Alonso. Chabi Alonso could come in, implement a system quickly, make a few changes to what Jurgen Klopp does. The players know the system because it's very familiar to it, and all of a sudden it works, and you start to get results, and then you build up momentum. That's why the first quarter of the season for a new manager is so important. I'm not expecting to win every single game, but I'm expecting to be up there within five, six points of first place, and then all of a sudden. Players are in a flow. Wow. We can get into a groove. Boom, move forward. Six right. points is really not that much. Two games back, like that's not very unrealistic to, to say that this Liverpool team that's next season. That's really close. You're six points off of whoever's going to be top of the league next year with an incoming manager. That's for, an amazing That's an amazing debut season for any manager at Liverpool. Why? 100%, I don't envision 100%. that, not even remotely. Not even remotely. I can see that happening based on the players that we have and who we could potentially get and how we could potentially move forward. Because to be honest, if you give the same exact roster to a to a manager like like Chabi Alonso, maybe you add a couple pieces. Well, if Trent knows? if Trent who thinks knows? like you, he's not going anywhere. But if Trent sees differently, I think he would be weighing his options. And again, we all need to be honest. If Real Madrid come knocking, and if you rate Trent to be this worldy player. Then he's going to be he's going to, he's going to be considering going to Real Madrid. Can I uh, can I can I interject here? And I want to ask a question here, simple question before I do the super chats for everybody sending super chats. We'll do that all of them. I want to start with Dawood. If you have one spot left in a team, no context, nothing. Who are you choosing, Foden or Trent Alexander Arnold? For me, a player. Not that... not because of your team. Don't tell me because I have been white. I'm <laughs> telling you, who are you choosing no, yeah. to affect the team? One of these players has had a massive impact in their team winning multiple trophies. One of these players has come in and has had a, has turned up in some of the biggest games of their team's careers. And that is Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'm sorry, but Phil Foden is 23 years of age. And this season is the first season that is actually turned up for Man City. This season... <laughs> no, I'm, being, I'm being serious. This Do you season, know why I love it? I don't know. Let him on, finish. No, let, no, no, let, wait, let me, let me, he can finish. Go on, Dawood. Sorry, finish. Yeah, but yeah, this season is the first time this season everyone's recognising Phil Foden. The disrespect Trent Alexander-Arnold gets is unreal. This guy has been turning up for Liverpool since 2018, 2018, probably even earlier. I'm not even sure. And he is one of the key factors of why they've won every single trophy that's available, available to them. And if they win the Europa League this year, there's not a trophy that they haven't won. So, like, if we're looking at impact players, if we're looking at, you know, players that have actually had an impact on their team, it has to be trying as an out ahead of Phil Foden. Phil Foden has had the luxury of playing with some, some of the world-class players of all time. He's had the luxury of playing with Bernardo Silva, David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Erling Haaland, Sergio Aguero, Raheem Sterling. Like, the luxury of players that he's played alongside and has, that he's learned from has been night and day compared to Trent and Arnold. So like, like, come on, man. Let's let's have some respect on Trent, and and let's say that this guy has had a massive impact on Liverpool winning major trophies. And we can't say the same thing. The first three league titles that Man City won with Pep Guardiola. Can you really say Phil Foden had a massive impact? And if he was out of the team, Man City were not going to win the league. No, we can't say that. So like, like, let's Listen, have some the question Trent. wasn't no, about over time. Wait, wait, the wait, question. Wait, wait. No, 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 would, no, 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 no
you, you say compare Trent has only won one Champions League, one Premier League, one FA Cup, one League Cup. Am I correct? One of each. I think he's won six goals. more trophies than any Spur, uh, uh, any goals. Spurs player has. Okay, okay, okay but goals. I'm not I'm not speaking from a Spurs goal. point of view. I'm speaking one from of everything. Point. One okay, of that's everything. Fine. Foden's got about five trophies in just League Cups. Yeah, you're right. So when you talk Foden about wait, also so has 115 about, wait, So when you talk about contributing to just trophies, okay, Trent's contributed to five trophies. Trent uh, Foden's contributed to about 10 or, 10 or 12. And then when you talk, just five League Cups, he would have been played a big role in Champions League, scoring goals, playing in big games. Kevin De Bruyne missed uh, he's missed quite a lot of big games through injury throughout the last couple of years because he's just been injured. His body's been breaking down. I mean. Foden's been scoring the key goals. You yeah, can't tell me that Foden's not Would been... Man City have won less trophies? No, Foden that was not the question. The question Mo no. asked was, which player would you have join your team? And you Tristan's... went on this whole going back two, three, four, five years. We're talking about which player would you take into your team now? I'm going to nip you're... this in the butt, Bader. I would rather have Foden. Just, just I'm like I'm just gonna go out there and just nip it, like right, like like if you're gonna look at this from a top down perspective, Phil Foden is a player who offensively changes the game more than Trent Alexander Arnold does because of the system. If Trent, if 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 Trent were a midfielder the way that I wanted him to be, if Trent were the player that I envisioned him to be, and after the after the Champions League final, he was moved into midfield and he's one of the best midfielders in the world because that's how I could see him, I think that this would be a different debate. But Phil Foden can play at right wing. He could play at the 10. He can play in the midfield. He can play on the left. He can play in the nine. Phil Foden can get you the goal when you need it. Phil Foden can create the opportunity when you need it. And also, he's two years younger. Like, that's the big thing here. Phil Foden has a longer expectancy than Trent because Phil Foden is 23 years old and he's already done everything. Now, you can say that he's had the best players in the world around him. You can say he's had Holland. You can say he's had De Bruyne. I don't care. Phil Foden has created magic out of absolutely nothing. The guy is a world-class player. There is no debate world about class, this. I'm not he sure is, about that. He, he, he's 100% a world-class player. I don't even think that this is. I don't even think that this is a debate. He is, without a doubt, one of the highest potential forwards in the world. And what I've seen so far this year would 100% put him in world class. You put me the same and, scale as Vinicius Junior. Yeah. Same. I mean, he's also yeah, yeah, 100%. Why? Why the hell not? Who else in the world? He's jealous. Can I compare no, he's because Saka, on I the wings? You, it's because Saka can't have the conversation. He's jealous. No, 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 no. Yeah, you're still he's mad about Rio, what Rio said about Saka and Foden. That's but, why. But hold you, on, yeah. hold on. I, I, I also don't Saka's even think. Class. We I haven't even seen class. the best of Foden. We haven't even, like, like, here's the thing. We still haven't even seen the best of Foden because there's times where Pep puts him and he, he's essentially taking him out of the game in order to accommodate other players, which doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand why you're trying to accommodate Julian Alvarez when you have Phil Foden. I don't understand why you're trying to play this 4D chess and make sure that everyone's playing when you already have your boy in there and he can get the job done, right? So... I, I I don't think that this is a comparable situation because Trent is being played out of position to where he, where he naturally should be, and Phil Foden is right where he should be, and Phil Foden adds more <clears throat> right now this season. <clears throat> that, one second. I, I actually one have. Second, uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I'm sorry, but this took longer than expected. This fo this Trent thing. I'm gonna say something to everybody, to just to respond to what George said because it's, uh, it's a lot of waffle. He said about the number of trophies and shit. And I'll tell you why it's it's shit. Because if you ask a hundred people in the world, who would you take, Nathan Aki or Virgil van Dijk, as your left-sided center back? A hundred people will tell you I'll take Virgil van Dijk, even though Nathan Aki won way, way multiple trophies and contributed, by the way. Nathan Aki is not only that he's just part of the squad. Nathan Aki at some point was City's best defender. Uh, City, so I'm not oh, just giving you... Would, I am not giving you a shit... Wait, because you know you're, you lost the argument when I said that. I didn't give you a shit player. I didn't give you a bench player. I gave you a player that I rate, Man City fans rate, even rivals rate. But you saying that I would choose Foden because he won trophies? I, I didn't, I didn't sense Because he plays in a better though. team. In my opinion, he plays... You know, under a better manager, in my opinion. No, but I, I respond. No, but no, but more. You're seeing it wrong because I I respond. I am. Exactly. I am because that's how you explain no, it. Wrong, Maybe you I need to explain it better. No, Your first I argument said. was he won multiple trophies, and the other no, guy no, didn't. No, I, that was, was his argument. Response to what Daoud said as regard to Trent had um he had contributed in bigger games in 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 them winning trophies to say that Foden hadn't, and I was literally counting the amount of trophies that Foden had had big amount of um. 
like he, he played a big part in the like the just the league cup for example he used to mm-hmm. play those games all the time when he was a fringe player like you alluded no, to no but the thing is he used to win all the time go ahead go ahead from 18 years old or so Foden's been contributing to trophies so to say oh Trent's played in more bigger games it's just it's it's no but that's not that to be honest with you I actually We'll take Trent because I think Trent affects the game more than no, 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 at your club, at your club, Mo, is that what you're talking about? At your it's club not my or... club. If I see it's <laughs> when we ask these questions, I ask them about not a club. The reason why some clubs need a midfielder, like Arsenal, for example, they don't need a right back, they need a midfielder. I'm no, asking no, no, abstract, sorry, thought, does that make sense to you? What... Like, I okay. am valuing the valuation of the two players. How would they add to a squad? In my opinion, it's very close. If I'm speaking Trent, this is what people fail to understand. If I'm saying Trent, that doesn't mean that Foden wouldn't add. It means we're splitting hair here. It's very close. But I believe that Trent actually affects the game more than Foden. The reason why... Well, well, I just got one quick question. I believe Foden, Man one, City one would win be, trophies without Foden, right? Yeah. Even though he adds a lot. Even though he adds a lot. It's not his fault, right? But I believe Liverpool is going to be affected massively without Trent. Okay, but Mo, this is why it's confusing. Because when you say you're not why applying it to clubs, you're saying you're not applying it to clubs, but then you're saying you believe at Man City someone wouldn't be more effective or less effective. I thought you posed a question first to, to the Yeah, about... but, but, but I, I need to analyze what I have. For, so here's the thing, uh, Vator. For yeah. me to say what I say, I have to analyze the history and what I have said, what I have seen. How am I judging Foden or Trent? By the by everything that is by everything that is okay. out there. You know what so I mean? So hold on, hold, okay. So hold on. Let's let's just do apples to <inaudible> apples. <inaudible> Let, let's let's do apples to apples. Let's just use the same club. Let's 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 use Liverpool. Liverpool, they have the option of Foden or Trent. Trent. As you see, as you see it, Mo, are you having Trent? Or are you having Foden? No, no, that's an unfair question. That's an unfair question. But the thing is, I don't get what you guys are saying. To be no, honest, because, because I, okay, I actually okay. think no, it's no, a very. No, no, no. Can we? Can I, ask I think one it's a question, conversation. Question. I don't know what what are we talking about. No, 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 one question. Let me just hear. Okay, one second. We are splitting hairs here. Like I don't. I don't. There is no wrong answer. No, there is a wrong answer. There is. Okay, let me let me ask one question. That's the wrong answer. That's it. Who has the wrong answer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Vito yo, guys, yo, bro, bro, let me ask one question. One question. Okay. What's more likely? Man City winning the trouble last season without full Foden or Liverpool winning the Champions League without Trent as an Arnold when they won the Champions League that season? City. City. City, City most likely will still have won the, tra- the trouble last season without full Foden. There's absolutely no chance he Liverpool even, won that Champions by the way, he didn't League that even, season I don't think he actually without Trent. Absolutely. Part the I can guarantee season. you Without Trent that season, Liverpool not winning the Champions League. There's absolutely no way. Liverpool, Man City won the treble. If Very Phil Foden, hardy. if Phil Foden was not in the squad last season, Man City are still winning the treble. They're still winning it. That's not true. That's, that's not, true. not. That's not. Uh, true. Anyway, it's listen. Not. I gotta do the super Absolutely chats, ridiculous. people. I want you guys. <laughs> what? There's over 600 people here, guys. Let's hit that like button underneath your live chat, and I want each and every one of you in the chat to answer this question. Which one is better? Phil Foden or Trent? Just one word. Foden or Trent in the chat. Right? Just one word. And then let's do the super chat because they're piling up. Uh, Jambrook is saying this rival are, uh, AI. all fans AI. are hoping Trent leaves. AI's fans are hoping Trent leaves. I actually see that people want Trent to go, Jambro. Of course people they want do. Trent to of go. Of course they do. No, they want to see him go. Like people want to see Salah go. Like people want to see Haaland exactly. leave. Like exactly. people want to see Pep leaves. Right? Absolutely. 100%. Andrew Rice is saying this City fan doesn't know how good Edward is. Do you know how good Edwards is, Vater? Uh, hey, if Edwards is that good, we're going to see it. We're going to see it. You will. Where, where's Edwards been? How, how long has he been away from Liverpool? How many years? Four. Three. Four. Okay, and after the after I think the he left winning. in 2020, 2021 I after think. the last after the last title win. Yeah. Um. Anyway, guys. yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So yeah. he is that good. All right. My bad, yeah. Andrew. Jamro right. came back and saying Trent is for, uh, is up for extension. Hence that I agree. International break. He's up for extension, and now hence 
Real Madrid is linked to him. So yeah, I agree. It's it's it can it can be. But to be honest, just to be honest, this trend to Real Madrid thing is not only now. People forgot that in the summer there was sniffing around Trent and a right back. Real Madrid wanted to replace Carvajal in the summer. Uh, Neil Utpal, big up my guy Neil Utpal for supporting the channel. Big up Neil Utpal. Trent is a scouse. He loves this club. Wasn't McManaman a scouse? Or wasn't Michael Owen? No, I don't know. I wouldn't compare McManaman to, okay. to Trent. It's, I don't know, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant in this. It's not the same as Owen and Zavi. He is a local boy. He is not leaving. End, end of. Keep dreaming, by the way. I understand Trent, Trent has triggered City fans and players. He did. They did videos Trent about him. Nilot Pal, they did videos about him. People recorded no. videos about the, 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 the things he Mo, said. So, yes. Mo, I want Trent to stay. I want all those tweets, all of one of four. I want all of that. I want all of his. I want all of it. So he's reminded and he sees my players showing armpits every damn time. I want him to stay in this prep. I don't want him to go. All right. Um, Sean. Saint Conte, Ancelotti, and Ranieri won the league within their first two seasons. By the way, just saying, I think Ranieri that's never does lies. Didn't he manage Chelsea before he went to Leicester? So Leicester. yeah, he managed Chelsea in two thousand one mm. and two, two and three. No, like three Mourinho. no, it was just before Mourinho came. Three and four, yeah, 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 three and four before Mourinho came in. Yes, but yeah, but he won with Leicester. But that's a lot of people now are going to this. Argument about uh Jurgen Klopp, and that's for another day, okay? Because I did a whole yeah. video about and, that. And that's a whole can of worms, and we yeah, yeah. Sean, appreciate you, buddy. Ryan is saying, get Amram out of my club. Amram isn't even in your club. Most He's not in our club. overrated manager in the world. One Portuguese title in four years and a shocking <clears throat> European record. Well, Ryan, a lot of Tom is doing a camp, I think, outside of Anfield to 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 hire mm. Amrim. Somehow, compilations, TikToks, videos, everywhere. It's very strange, to be honest, but I get it. Nilo Pal is coming back and said, Mo, you are a genius for bringing the food and topic. That's Gang Impress. The food and topic is actually what, what, what in my head, is, is the very good comparison. When Pep leaves, is he going to go? Will people tell me that he's going to go? I, I, I doubt it, but we'll see how it goes. Nilo go. Pal, appreciate you. Uh, Andrew saying, this is the best squad we ever had in the Premier League. We ever had youth academy experience. Peak players, Edwards is back, and he made Klopp team. George, that's for you, actually, because about uh, the fall-off well, of I, Liverpool. I mean, Edwards is really good. He was at Tottenham before he's at Liverpool, so I understand how good he is. I'm not going to take that away from him, but uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see what if, if FSG backs him, and we'll see what he works with. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, you know what? Andrew Wright... I, I'm a, I'm I'm sold. A couple super chats. I'm sold. Edwards is back. Ed, the last time Edwards was there was when you guys won the league. He's returning. Okay, I'm with you. And then he comes back and says something completely opposite to what I said. He, we probably battle for top four after club. So I don't know which one is it. Andrew. Garbage. I'm, I'm We're really, challenging I'm, for the title next season. I am very you're confused. Not, not. Here we are. I'm very confused. The reality is setting in, Mo. The reality is setting I'm in. I'm really confused. Uh, to the Spurs fan. Kane isn't world class, mate. Never turned up in big games. Facts, but you're talking about trophies. Ha <laughs> ha. You have to respond. Kane don't play for Spurs. <laughs> Kane oh isn't a Spurs. I, I don't Easy need answer. to defend Kane anymore. I don't need to until he's a Spurs player again. So take that up with a bio. Yeah, but Andrew, to be honest with you, Kane is world class. Guys, he is, for no anybody doubt, that's no. saying is Kane is not a world class. The guy is absolutely amazing forward. Come on, people. You guys are just He's an amazing forward, but he—he's not a winner, though. Nope. Actually, he's not a winner. Yeah. That's, I mean, you, you can't—you can't, you can't say Kane is world class. Kane's not world class, and you say full fun is world class. You, you yes, just can't you can. do that. You can't do that. They're—they're they're, okay. They're they both are world day, class, man. and only one of them are <laughs> only one of them's a winner. Oh my days! Kane, Kane is world class. world class. No, no, world class is Guys, based on can I ask talent. you something? Can I ask a question about this? Let me just say, Andrew saying Origi is world class and, that, and yeah. then, and Kane isn't. Uh, are you serious? No, Andrew, the challenge is. Would Kane bench Holland at Manchester City? No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen Holland disappear in so many games this season, and you're talking Both about. Both of them do. 
Kane, like, Kane, Kane, Kane would go to the Champions League final and he would get like four touches. And then Man City would lose, and everyone would say, "Well, the Kane would get four touches." Win. Kane, do you know Kane's a better link up striker than Harry Kane, Kane will get four touches? <laughs> I, I, listen, listen, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm over exaggerating. He wouldn't show up in the final. Is what I'm saying. Listen, guys, listen. guys, yes or no in the chat? Would Kane bench Holland? No, he would in not. In Man City, I'm asking the chat, Victor. I'm then I'm gonna ask you. Easy, Harry Kane's a better footballer. He's a better footballer than Har Erling Haaland. We mm. can all agree on that. What does what what does and him... finishing finishing the on par on the same level when it comes to finishing? You can't no. tell me Hall, Erling Haaland is a better finisher than Kane. He's a better finisher because he came to this league and he set a record where Kane wasn't able to do it. That's how he's a better finisher. Well, playing playing with Tottenham Hotspur playing, compared to playing with Man City. Is it the player scoring goals or not? Is that amount of chances? Erling Haaland, remember the game against Man United. He, how many chances did he miss against Chelsea? How many chances did he miss at the Etihad Stadium? But he keeps on getting a chance after chance after chance after chance because he plays alongside some of the best attacking midfielders, some of the best creators. So if you've got Kevin De Bruyne, you've got Bernardo Silva, you've got Doku, you've got... You're not, you not going to... Uh, no, no, no. This, you've see, got this, uh, this uh, is Phil the Foden part. supplying you with 15 chances a game and you score two or three of them. Yes, but uh, did, did, uh, did Harry Kane get 15 chances a game for Tottenham Hotspur? He wasn't getting 15 chances every single game. So, like, no, come on, man. No like, when it comes to finishing, uh, look at look Harry Kane now. The amount of players he plays behind at Bayern Munich, look how many goals he's got. Like, this guy is a better, for me, he's a better finisher than Erling Haaland. He's a better link-up striker than Erling Haaland. He's a that's, better footballer than Erling Haaland. That's because of your Arsenal hate. That's because of your Arsenal hate. What do you All mean? Right? I was supposed to hate on, uh, on Harry Kane. No, I'm an no, you're hating, I'm you're hating on your Kane. title challengers right now. You're hating on Holland. Because no, 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 no. I would have still said, if Harry Kane was still at Tottenham Hotspur, I would still would have said that he's a better striker than Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland is still world class. Erling Haaland is still one of the best strikers in the world. But uh, Harry Kane has got can do the same level of Erling Haaland. Okay. No, 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 Mo, Mo, Mo. You know, no. I have to move on. Oh, how do you do? Let how do you let him rant on about my player? You know what, and you, then know what you, move you, on. you know what, Peter? Have Everyone the, the comments agree with me. Peter, Everyone in the comments agree with me. Peter, have the last say. See, we've seen Harry Kane in this league. We've seen Holland, and you're not gonna you're not gonna hit you're not gonna crush my player for his success because of the team that he plays on. You're gonna look at the the striker himself, and this striker. Holland was doing this before he came to City. Wherever he goes, he pretty much scores a goal a game, no matter what league he's in, no matter what teams he's in. And he's come to City and he's now set a record. Now, you want to compare players? I'll grant it. I'll say Harry Kane's better than Holland. I'll say he's better than Holland, but he's also many, many years older than Holland. Harry Kane was nothing at this level of Holland at this age. Nothing. Yes, he was. Yes, no, he, he was. was. No, he yes, wasn't. He was. no, but, 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 so, so can I, uh, Harry Kane became I, a killer. No, that's he not the argument. A killer. My point, but, okay, so my question, Vator, had nothing to do with age. It was, if if Kane goes tomorrow to City, would he bench Holland? And, and anyway, answer, it's no. an argument. Your answer is no. Uh, yeah, Martin, yeah. Mancunian way, big up Martin. Guys, make sure to sub for the Mancunian way. Martin, of course, absolutely brilliant guy, Martin. Guys, make sure to go and sub for the Mancunian way. Brilliant content every day. Foden was first sub on for injured KDB and improved dust to win the final. He changed us. I agree. It was my team. And we won when he came on. Facts, please. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But also... You have to understand that Foden wasn't as influential during the season. It was a midfield of Kevin De Bruyne, Gundogan, and Rodri the majority of the season. And Bernardo Silva right side. Bernardo Silva literally, because Foden has appendix or something like this. But yes, yeah, he, appendix he had a problem. But anyway, it's, ankles, but, but yeah, I get he, what he's saying. What he's saying is, is, is correct. Uh, Ryan is saying, Michael Edwards is a genius, became a, a, a director in 2005 and ever since then until he left our recruitment was amazing massive to have him back yes ryan absolutely a lot of people are hoping uh jj lloyd is saying vader where are you make sure i'm gonna do this when he comes back i'm gonna give him that uh andrew saying origi is the best clutch player in club era oh my god uh kane doesn't turn up in semi-finals and mo was saying for next year top four uh, for the new manager. Yes. Okay. I agree. Now I see what you're saying, Andrew. Vator Lloyd is saying, make sure you win a trophy this year. Make sure you do. Make uh, sure I win a trophy. This season. Or what? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you think I'm going to be pep out if I don't win a trophy? 
Yeah. <laughs> Ryan is saying this is stupid. Holland disrespect need to stop. Scored 52 goals in his first season to win a triple. What are we doing here? Too many as aesthetics merchants. No, no, no one disrespect to Erling Haaland. Everyone, I, I clearly said he's one of the best strikers in the world. But what we're comparing him is him and Harry Kane and what differences they have. Why Harry Kane is just a better striker than Erling Haaland. No one said yeah. Erling Haaland is not a world class striker. No one said he's one of the best in the world. So I'm no one yeah. disrespecting him. Yeah. Uh, Nilot Pal is saying disgrace to compare Tappen Merchant with Kane. No, See? That's disrespect. Opinions that's differ. Disrespect. But anyway, my point is opinions differ. But anyway, guys, this is how we're going to do super chats. If you want to send super chats related, I'm going to do them. We're going to do them in the topic now. We have to turn into the title race. Wow. 56 minutes on Trent and Foden and all this. Well, we can create debates from anything, bro. <laughs> anything. Anything. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to start with George. Three fan bases, George. Nobody wants to show chest. That's not true. I know. I will. I know more. I've been. I've been watching it. I've been paying. You are. Attention. You are right. Oh my and, God! And, what and I, I, I've noticed that a lot of fans. Underdog. A lot of fans. Are, yeah, call like, out they're, names, they're George. Call out names. Like drinking. Call out names. All, 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 everyone that used to come out and talk about we're winning league, we're doing this. Everyone's just like, oh. They're the favorite. So no, Arsenal are the favorite. So Liverpool, yeah. everyone's throwing like they're throwing call out names. Away. Call out names. Oh, 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 no, I'm just call out names. It doesn't matter. By the way, call out names. I don't care. Uh, no, nah, it's just that again, pe people were just everyone like is starting to shy the away. The majority. Let's say a, a big, a big part of the fan bases for the three teams are saying. And you know, mm, well, it's understandable. It's understandable. You, don't, you know, I I would say for Arsenal fans, I get it. Arsenal fans haven't won the league in a, it's what, 20 odd years and so on. So if they're going to sit there and be honest with themselves and looking at their running, they're going to go, ah, I don't think we can do it. Then that's fine. That's being honest. But Liverpool fans, Liverpool fans who've got the cheap to, to even sit there and, you know, shy away from the responsibility because they, they've bigged up this team to be yeah, Michael. The, the quadruple and everything. But you said I would talk with chess better. No. But not not oh so, oh yeah sorry I'm not I'm not referring to you in particular but just some Liverpool fans in particular they they they've shied away to, from the responsibility that they're the team that were if they're ahead of Man City just the performances they had against Man City recently as well they're the team to beat this is your title to lose they've they've arguably got one of the easiest runnings out of both of them because they're not playing Champions League they're they're, not, they're of course got Europa League it's going to have its own challenges but also looking at their Premier League running. They've already played that game against City. They, they haven't got to play each other like Arsenal and City do. So they, they've got to just beat all these other teams and do their job. they got some big home games as well. Yeah, man, like, it, it's the, the league title, the title race is looking it's, it's looking good. I think it's going to be a nice, nice end to the season. We haven't really had a title race like this for a long time. So as a fan that's not involved in it, you can say as a neutral, it's, it's going to be very fun to watch. But for who one of you guys, do, in your opinion, who do you think are favorites actually to win the league? I would always say Man City. I'm not going to take it away from them. Man City have done what they've done. They've proved what they've done over the last three, not even, let's say, five or six years. They've proven why they're the team to go out there and win the league. So my my favourites are always going to remain City. But I think Liverpool have the easiest running. Liverpool have the opportunity to take. But I just don't know if they... Liverpool don't... I, I didn't think that at the start of the season they had the team capable of doing it. Just because I think the midfield is a bit shaky. But it's found this feat. They're looking really good. So if they can maintain the level that they've shown recent, Liverpool, they can go work well and go do it. And I would not be surprised if Liverpool done it. But Arsenal, <laughs> if they go do it, God strike me down, man, because I've said some bad things. I've said some horrible things. And they're going to be coming for me. But if Arsenal do it, I'll be very, very surprised. I don't think Arsenal have a chance. And I, I do you know what? People what? Are gonna probably, I think that Arsenal are going to finish at least... <laughs> at least five to six points off the top spot. I think they're going to be some way off. So that, that that's just my opinion, bro. Yeah. I'm not sure who wants to take this. I don't think the wood actually. I haven't, I haven't spoken to the wood for a while. Who are the <laughs> favourites? And who are the underdogs? Obviously, Man City are favourites. Obviously, with the history and um, with the squad that they have and then the manager they have. Um, I think when it comes to the fairy tale story, what you know, Liverpool fans want, what the media wants. They've, that's the reason why they put Liverpool as second favourites. We are obviously the dark horses. We are obviously no one speaking about as 
you know, we, we speak about it, but I'm talking about the general media, you know, what the, the, the average fan would say. And most of them, like George said, like he just said that Arsenal are going to finish six points behind the champions. So obviously with the underdogs, obviously no one's looking at us compared to last season when they're basically the whole, the whole world... Was are you taking George's word, George's like words, and then you're like building your argument based on what he said? No, no, I'm talking about <laughs> what the generic fan thinks. I'm talking about the generic fan thinks is that we're not favourites. There's a reason why we've only got like a 12 percent chance from Opta to, to win to win the league. So it might be better for us because there's no that many eyes on us. There's not that much pressure on us, and we're gonna be if we're thereabouts the last five games of the season. You don't know what's gonna happen, so I'd rather have it. I'd rather have it like this than last season, where all the eyes were not on us, all the eyes were on us, and that that pressure we could handle it. This season, there isn't that same pressure from last season, so I take it. Um, I like being underdogs. I like being, you know, written off. So of course you do. I'll I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> um. I don't think anyone here is an underdog. I'm just going to put that out there. I think it's a little bit ridiculous to say well, there's 30 points uh, to play for. There's 10 games left. Um, there's one point that separates the top three. Two of us are at 64 points. I think that the title winner is probably going to be at 92 points. That means that one of these three teams is going to have actually, in order for Arsenal to win the league, I believe it's got to be 92. In order for Liverpool to win the league, I believe it's got 92. And Manchester City can only get a maximum of 93 if they win all 10 of their games. If they draw one, it's 91. Um, I think that every single team has an equal opportunity. I think that Manchester City have the pedigree of the past, so you just have to say, due to the historical basis, Man City are favorites, but I also don't even like that word because I don't think any one of them is a favorite right now. I think that Arsenal can go to the Etihad and win. I think that Spurs can pull a result against any of these teams. I think that Spurs genuinely have the opportunity to nick two points off of any of us. Um, I think that, ultimately speaking, Liverpool have the weakest squad of the three, but I also think that we have the easiest run in and we have less to play for in terms of what's left. I mean, Arsenal are trying to win a Champions League. Man City are trying to win an FA Cup and a Champions League. Yes, Liverpool have injuries, but we have the weakest opponents to go against. And, you know, based on that factor, you could say that Liverpool are, are the favorites. Based on Arsenal's factor, they are the most informed side in England right now. So in that sense, you could say that they are the favorites just based on form. And form matters towards the last 10 games of the season, especially if Arsenal somehow cruise through uh, Bayern Munich. Like, like, let's just say, for instance, first leg comes around, Arsenal win 3-1. All of a sudden everyone's going to have a totally different view. They're going to say, oh my God, Arsenal don't have to worry about the second leg. Boom, they're favorites. So as a Liverpool fan, I think that we have to win this title. I think that at minimum, we can only draw one game and win nine to win this league. I think that 92 points is the minimum that, that we can get to win this league. I want 94. I want all of them. And I want to win the league. There's no point. There's 10 games. There's there's 10 games left. There's no point in not talking with chess. What is the point of following this sport if you're not going to believe your club? If you're not going to say that I'm going to win the league? There is no point. I'm not just going to sit here and, and, and be coy anymore. You know, 10 games ago, sure. Mid-season, turn of the new year, I get it, right? But it's almost the end of March. It's time to start talking with Chest. We need to win this league. There is no argument around it. We can beat every single team that we play. I can beat Tottenham. I can beat Everton. I can beat United. I can beat Villa. I can beat Wolves. There's no reason why we cannot win this league with who we have based on our league form. I don't care about the FA Cup, the Europa League. Let's not sit here and pretend like that's the same thing as the Champions League and that we're, we're playing against competition that are equal to us. We're not. We're playing competition that's beneath us and we should be able to go through to the final. There is no excuses for it. And if we crash out, all the more reason why we must win the league. So, um, so yeah, anyone who's saying that Liverpool is an underdog, that's bullshit. You're just coping and you're trying to avoid blame. And you're right. trying to basically, you're just trying to cover yourself. So if we don't win the league, you could say, you know what? We didn't really have a chance. Right. I say fucking bullshit. We have every chance in the world and we should. And I'm not going to accept anything less than the Premier League title at the end of this season. And you have to speak with Chess. And if you don't, you're just covering your ass. And I say that's 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 a, that's a pussy way out. Respect that, man. I yeah, yeah I, I rate that. I rate that hugely. I rate that hugely. I think um, when it comes down to the whole favorites thing, man, cool, I've been, I, 
I've been I've been I've been favorites for the last five, six, seven, eight. Whenever Pep got here, you guys said City are favorites, and that was before we even did anything. So being favorites, I'm not I'm not surprised. I'm not even shook by it. Now, if I happen to be favorites, I don't think it's a huge difference though. And this is where I rate Mike with how he's speaking because it's not miles separating clubs. It's not miles separating the the chance of winning this winning this title. The fact that only one point separates all three of us is why this is so close and why it is marginal. There's no there's no copium after the fact for those of you rivals that want to talk about and say we aren't favorites to win this league. So when it doesn't happen, ooh, see, I told you we weren't favorites. No, there's no copium that's going to be happening like that. You're in a position to be able to win it. And and the same thing goes for my club. I know statistically, and when you guys want to say I'm playing the underdog or I'm giving the sob story, statistically, I'm trying to do something that's impossible. Winning a fourth is damn near impossible because it's never been done before. Doing a back-to-back trouble, have we seen that in the Prem? No. So for me to accomplish all those things, it's highly unlikely. But are my favorites to win all three competitions? Yes. It goes It goes without, without saying. Now, I found it funny for some Arsenal fans that say that they'd rather be in this position now than they were last year. Come on. This is copia, man. Stop. If this is how you deal with PTSD, cool. Last season, you're five points ahead at this same point in the season. You're trying to tell me you'd rather be one point up on now treble winners and now Liverpool who have won the league before versus last year being five points up? What, what kind of sense does that make? Now, Because because we lost three key players. The Latin going to last 10 games of the season last season. That's why. No, I'm talking about your position and where you are this season. You would trade in a heartbeat to be there right now. You would rather have five points with 10 games left now than be one point up with 10 games to go. That's a fact. Now, I understand your point as well. I'd rather not have the attention. I'd rather everybody talk about City and Liverpool because then I know my fan base. I know my players. We can't deal with that pressure. We crumbled last year. So I'd rather be the underdog. I'd rather be the forgotten one. I'd rather be the, what is it? The black sheep or dark horse. Oh, cool. Because now you can just try and sneak your way to a title. But as a rival, I'm bringing attention to all three of us. This is our this is our title race to win. Now, I do have the pedigree. I do have the experience. I do have the manager. I'm giving my edge in all, in, in all aspects. But it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's all these games because some of these and I haven't broken it down. I haven't nerded out. I haven't geeked out to go. Okay, who's playing for reg, uh, relegation? Who has a chance to be top four? I haven't done any of that type of math. None of that even matters. Fair, but but some will go into the numbers that way. I'm just saying that the last remaining ten games, I know that I have to play at a higher clip because I'm already a point off you guys, and it's that simple. You have to win all ten games, Bader. Like City, City have a maximum of, of ninety three points. Have I have to win all. What do you mean? Until one what do you mean? Drop a game, though. That's what, what do you mean? I, what do you mean? Hold on, Mo, Mo. The, the maximum that someone can get this season is ninety four points. Okay, I don't think that it's unreasonable to say that ninety two is the cutoff. I can I can see Arsenal winning nine out of ten. I can see Arsenal beating everyone except City. Like that's very that's very feasible. I can see Liverpool. Even Dawi doesn't see that. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I okay, but hold on. Who the hell went in this season and say that five games from now Arsenal will have twenty six goals? I did. Like, I did. Added, 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 I know. I, I totally yeah. understand that. But Arsenal are currently on a runner. If I'm not wrong, of like eight nine games winning run. Eight, eight wins yeah. in a row. Yeah. Eight wins in a row. So Arsenal. I I could not see Arsenal going. 18 games in a yeah, row no. or it winning to end the season. That's just what I don't see. I'm like, I see well, I them going on a run time. and I saw them doing this run. And I, if they beat C, I won't be surprised. But going on to just win, 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 it's a lot. It's and you it can, would be a lot can, of any points, team, not even just oh, Arsenal. Yeah. If this was Liverpool, see, 16 games or 18 games in a row is a lot for anyone. Like, let's be Ridiculous. honest. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Mm. You can, 100%. you can drop, I think you can drop four points, four or five points, and you can still win the league. I think you can win okay, the watch, league. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So I did this thing the other day, right? Where you actually, this is my, this was my predictions, right? This is my predictions for the, for the last yeah. game, right? The red is away. For the people that don't know, I did this one uh, a couple of days ago by myself, right? And I predicted Liverpool to get 90 points, Man City and Arsenal both to get 89 points. It'd be one point difference. I base that based on Arsenal losing a game and drawing a game, Liverpool drawing two games, and Man City drawing two games. Right? That's what I base this on. 
The games that I see uh, Man City dropping points probably is Spurs and maybe Brighton and or Fulham away. I see Arsenal losing to Manchester City and maybe drawing against Spurs or something, right? Or Wolves away, one of them. And Liverpool are going to draw two games. I don't know, against Villa away and maybe against Man, uh, uh, Man United. That's what I saw. And I believe that Liverpool are favourites for me to win the, the league from this. My question is, from these games, and you guys see the games in front of you, from Arsenal, which games do you see Arsenal dropping points? Shall I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'd say we might not beat Man City. I think, I think we'll get a draw at City. So that would two points dropped. Um, Spurs away. Depends on what kind of Spurs turn up. Depends on what squad they have. And I think we might drop points. So that's four points. And I think, that's why I said, I think we can afford to drop four points and still win the league. I think we'll draw, if we draw against City and draw against Spurs, we can we can win the rest of the Premier League, the other games. So, yeah, I think if we if we avoid losing and we only drop four points maximum, I think we can still win the league. Does anybody Liverpool, does anybody oh. think? And I'm gonna ask. I want to ask. I want to ask uh, uh, George for this. You see a rival. Do you think if Arsenal lose to Man City, it will fall apart? I don't think they no. fall apart because I, I see. You the don't Luton think you don't think it's a domino effect. What? No, I, I I think that the Luton and Brighton games are games that they will gain confidence from again. But then mm. I, I think the tough games come after the even the split. They've got that Man United, um Man United away is it's two games before the end of the season. And then Chelsea, it hasn't been rescheduled, exactly. if I'm correct. Exactly. So the Chelsea game is gonna be popped in between somewhere on maybe a midweek game. No, Chelsea, game, if I'm if I'm no if I'm correct, I think Chelsea has been rescheduled to be the same week of the Tottenham game. Yeah, so yeah. Arsenal, yeah. Arsenal are already looking at having two games squeezed cool. together against big teams. And that's where I see it getting in trouble. The bigger games against Chelsea, Chelsea have nothing to play for. If they can ruin Arsenal season, that, that's them. Like they're, they're well happy. They're not exposed. Well like, that's well what worth they do. It. So the last three games, guys, are nobody actually know when it when it's going when are they going to be played. Yeah, they they were uh, so, except for City, I believe, right? No. Oh wait, no, no. You, you're right. You're right. My bad. My bad. Nobody. Can, listen, listen. <clears throat> right now, my Mike and I we're going to do a little education right now, and no no disrespect to to you know the Spurs and Arsenal fans, but I'm looking at the remaining fixtures, and I think I think the tricky games are actually the games that hover around Champions League. My, Mike Mike would understand this when. When your club's got to prepare <laughs> in a short, I've played plenty of Champions League, mate. <laughs> no, I know, but current current season, I'm just saying current season, and you know, what's, no, what's no, no, I get with? you, I get you. Go do it. Right, right, right. Slight dig, <laughs> slight dig, slight, slight, dig. slight, slight. But let it slide, let it slide. No, the thing is, it's the games hovering around Champions League. So if you look at, I, I believe that it's Brighton away before you play Bayern, right? And af after that, or I think the next. You're going to actually play Wolves away after playing Bayern on the second leg. So it's those games that I think are going to be a little a little tricky and where the players need to – they need to be able to play at the levels responsible for that. And not only that, your manager, we can all be fair, has been a little eh in terms of managing rotation and, and, and who starts, who doesn't, the amount of minutes. So I think if any Arsenal fans are going to be a little – concerned on where the drop points may happen it may be a little early in this run as it hovers around champions league i actually think that i think that another advantage that liverpool has is that we don't have to play relegation teams and arsenal and manchester city do so that's that's another factor that i don't have to worry about i don't have to worry about someone who's literally fighting for their life i'm, I'm pretty much playing lower mid table mid table and then villa and spurs Right outside of that, I'm playing mid table teams, teams that will be in the Premier League next season, teams that don't have anything to play for other than pride. I think that ultimately the hardest games here are going to be everyone has to play Spurs, Arsenal has to play City, and then we all have our own separate derbies. Right? Like I have to play uh, Everton away and I have to play United away. Those are two games that scare me. Um, Arsenal have to play Chelsea at home. Chelsea have nothing to play for other than spoiler. I don't care who you think you are. That's going to be a tough game. And Chelsea have shown up away 
against huge teams and pulled great results. In fact, Chelsea have also played good football this season. It's just that more often than not, they're shit, but that doesn't mean that there's not potential there. Um, and I think that, you know, City have their own issues when it comes to relegation teams and their own individual derbies. So we all have tough run-ins. Liverpool obviously had the easiest if you want to like make some sort of paper conversation. Um, but yeah, if you're a Liverpool fan, there is no excuse. I look at that thing and I say I should win every single one of those games. And if you think that's unrealistic, whatever, but that's just the way I see it. I see 10 winnable games. I want 30 points. Yeah, listen, for me, I'm looking at Liverpool fixtures and I'm seeing Liverpool easier just because Man City play Arsenal and I don't know who's going to come out winners. I would pick Man City uh, to win the game, to be honest. But the last part I want to ask before I do the Super Chats, uh, George, do you think Spurs will decide this title? Who do you think you will win against? I think we win. I'd, I, look, I'll say this. I think we don't get any points at Liverpool. Anfield's not a stomping ground that we ever have fun at. So I'll say that. Um, I think Liverpool are going to be one team that I definitely don't have no confidence against. But the two home games, I've got a feeling City are going to be in full force feeling themselves and they're going to come to Spurs ground wanting to prove something because they still haven't scored a goal there in the Premier League. Um, I don't know if they're going to walk away winners. But the Arsenal game, I know that we're going to be up for. And I do fancy us against Arsenal. Though it's going to be a tough game because Arsenal are really good. I do like the way that they play at the moment. So it's, none of the games are easy. But I do think that we definitely take points of Arsenal. And City, I, I can still see us walking away with something. So you're going to handle Liverpool the title? Anyway, I know please, that, please I, do. I wouldn't say that, but, it, but yeah. yeah, I don't. We could do. Yeah, and I know that George have to go. Okay, we're, we're going on for another 10 minutes, people, or something. But I know, George, George you, appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, Thank you for, uh, for for being here with us. And we'll see you soon, bro. Hopefully see again soon. soon. See you, see you. Big up. Nice. Big up, George. And listen, people, we're still going on for another 10, 10, 15. Because I want to get this. Let's talk about Arsenal, though. It's, it's the reason why I want to speak about Arsenal because they are the ones who aren't experienced. And I'm going to... There is another thing that I want to talk about, about Jurgen Klopp and how he... There is a narrative going on around him that he crumbles under pressure, Jurgen Klopp, that he hasn't won a title when it matters. Um, it's not me. It's not me, Mike. They said the only title Liverpool won, <laughs> the only title... I've seen this going around Twitter a lot now. It's bullshit. COVID title? Get, out, get the fuck out. It's not we COVID were, title. We were... It said there was nobody chasing you and you had no pressure behind you. And the Champions League, you only played Spurs. When it came to play Real Madrid, you lost both. That's what they said. Yeah, those are all true. But I want to I first start with Dawood and Arsenal. If Arsenal go on and win this league, Dawood, do you see you dominating? Uh... I think this is the perfect time to take advantage of what's happening around us. There's uncertainty around my United, uncertainty around Chelsea. There's uncertainty around Liverpool or they're going to get as their next manager. Man City, Pep Guardiola's next season, last season, if I'm not mistaken. The last season, next season. So Let after next back. season, they're going to have an uncertainty who they're going to get next. So if we find a way, that's why I said... I'd obviously be massively disappointed if we don't win the league title this season. But we've got a manager, we've got a squad where we're going to be around out around the title challenge every single season for me for the next four seasons. Four or five seasons, we're going to be challenged for the Premier League title. It's not a, you know, win it now and you're never, you're never going to win it. We're going to be in the... That's why I was obviously devastated last season that we didn't win the league. But it wasn't all or nothing. People were making it sound like... Because we didn't win it last season, it was our best opportunity. We're never going to win ever again. That was that was like, you know, uh, people that had that opinion. I don't understand because they didn't know what kind of path we were going going towards. And now you can see it. We're still going to improve. We're still going to spend money. We spent two hundred fifty million pound last season on three players where everyone was laughing at us. David Ray, why are you saying David Ray for? Because wow. you got Ryan Ramsdale. There's, now we're proving why we bought David Ray. Why are you saying Declan Rice is not going to take to another? We've got Thomas Partey. The reason why we signed Declan Rice because he plays 50 games a season. Why did he sign Kai Havertz? He's going to take you backwards. Kai Havertz is a you know a, a player that can play in multiple positions, and now he's proving that 
there's a reason why he won the Champions League with Chelsea. There's a reason why every single manager that Chelsea brought in, Carvers was always starting for them. And he's proving it right now. So, Mikel Ed, uh, uh, Edu, their recruitment, I trust their recruitment. I trust that we're, we're going to spend money every single summer compared to Liverpool. Liverpool, we don't know if FSG are going to spend, you know, £250 million. Pounds. We're going to spend £200 million pounds minimum next summer. Minimum. So, yeah. Um, if we, for me, if Pep Guardiola leaves, we should be the favourites for the Premier League title for the next four seasons. Compared with the money that we spend, we should be favourites. Because, yeah, you can say, if Pep Guardiola leaves, you don't know who you're going to get. You don't know who you're going to get. You can't guarantee that another... Pep Guardiola is the greatest manager of all time. For me, the greatest manager of all time. If you lose him, you're going to need a manager. Like, if you get De Zerbi, De Zerbi is not a serial winner like Pep Guardiola. You're going to have to trust him to... It's going to take him a season or two to adapt. So, for me, we've got the squad. We've got the manager. Next four seasons, next five seasons, if we can win two or three league titles... That is that, that that's that's two what, that's or what three league at. titles. Does the anybody believe two or three league titles in the next five seasons? That's not ridiculous. Number one, Pep is gonna extend another two years, he's gonna extend to 2027. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, he is. He's gonna he do will. a decade in the prem. There's no reason not to. No reason not to. He's gonna Probably, do a decade in the prem. Klopp leaving, actually, I think he's gonna stay another two years. We say that, we say that, but he might lose that. Drive to. You're saying Arsenal's only hope is uh, if if Pep leaves. No, 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 no. no. You I think Pep's going to get tired like Klopp? We are guaranteed to be in the Premier League title race every single season for the next five seasons. Guaranteed. Pep is Pep already said I'm 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 willing to. I think he's going. I think the day Jurgen Klopp announced that he's leaving on a Friday, there was a cup game. I think Pep said in an interview that I'm looking forward to win more trophies here and maybe extend something that, uh, along these lines. Yeah, and he he's said already he's said that. Though. And he said he's got a lot of energy. I have a lot of energy. Yeah, he literally said that. So we'll see. If Pep stays, does anybody see? And I want. Does anybody see Vater? Do you see Arteta actually battling Pep at all? Like being the anti-Pep in the league in the next three years, for example. He's doing the last two seasons. Why can't he do it for the next five seasons? I'm no, asking. Hold on, hold on. Hold That's what I'm asking. Yeah. The the question about whether. Yeah. Whether whether Danielson can can challenge Mr. Miyagi, yes, he can challenge. <laughs> um, whether he can win, that needs to be seen, right? Every Arsenal fan, they're waiting to see it. They have hope, they have faith, but there's no belief yet because nothing's been proven. They can't believe something because it hasn't been proven. But they have faith, they have hope in it. Now, if if there's going to be a challenger, I see it being Arsenal right now because they have everything in place. There's going to be a lot of questions with Liverpool. But again, if Edwards coming in and making the right choices, there's no reason for them not to be ch continued challengers, right? And I, I like what I'm seeing with regards to Spurs as well. I think they got injury plagued this season. But if they continue to improve with what they're doing, I think they're going to be in the mix as well. If you're if you're competing, again, if you're, if you're in this mix of top four, it is going to be a battle because I, I think... There's not much separating the clubs. Now, the difference that's happened with regards to City is because we've been very cutthroat. We've been serial winners. Like, we've not want to relinquish an inch of being at the top of the league. With Pe When Pep goes, if he happens to go, I think the ambition still stays there from a club standpoint, but maybe we don't get the same level of execution and, and drive in terms of a manager, demanding your best regardless of who you are, right? So... Whoever we get, I think it's still going to be a contest. It's still going to be a competition. Arteta dominating the league, winning three, four. No, I, I don't see that. I, I I really don't see that. But I do see a I do see everything kind of coming back to a to a bunch, a, a group of two or three clubs all continuously being in the mix. Yeah, guys. Before we go on, guys, you guys have to be able to hit that like button. You know, if you are watching us. You're not, you, you close the live chat right here. Close the live chat. The like button looks like thumbs up right underneath your live chat. You have to close the live chat and we need to get to 300 likes. It's unacceptable that we have 700 people and we don't have 300 likes. Unacceptable, to be honest. Come on, people. Hit that like button. The like button is the only way we're going to get more subscribers and more people watching. You want to grow this community, hit the like button underneath the live chat. It's actually 300 likes is the minimum. If you have 700, we should have 350 likes. 300 likes are the minimum underneath the live chat. Here we go, people. 
Mike, you want to, uh, how do you see Arteta actually? If Zabi Alonso comes in, for example, for, for your club, how do you see Arteta in this competition? I think that Arteta has kind of taken, I mean, he's taken five years to really get into form per se. I know that they challenged for the title last season and they were favorites and then they blew it, which happens. You know, it's not just, he's not the first person to do that. And he sure as hell isn't the last. Um, but I, I think that he's shown his moments in, in big games from time to time that he is, you know, somewhat quality. I know that there are a lot of Arsenal fans out there who, are judging everything based on a, a trophy pedigree, and that's why they will remain Arteta out, even if the success happens, because they believe that the past has already proven, you know, the future per se. Um, I think that there's a healthy mix of fair and unfair criticism when it comes to him, because I, I like personally, I do think that fans of all sports, everyone has this overbearing pressure on trophies, and I'm like, yeah that kind of makes sense. But at the same time, only one person can win any of these trophies. You know what I mean? Like in each competition, there's only one winner. If you're, if you're, if you're going to judge your entire life just based on one where you're not going to have a good time. I think I saw something the other day. There's only been like, like eight ever winners of the premier league in the premier league era. And there's 20 teams in it per season and three get relegated and three get added. Like the game isn't all about trophies. Um, but I think that he has to continue to do this, right? I think that he needs to, well, first off, he needs to he needs some sort of silverware. He either needs to win the league this season or he needs to win the Champions League. Otherwise, it's like you're going to bring in the conversation of, yes, he's good, but is he world class? Is he the guy that's going to bring me the silverware? Dahoud, I'm not I'm not saying that I believe this. I'm just saying that that's the conversation that that will be had after this season, um, because at a certain point, a manager can only take you so far, right? Like Pep, the furthest that he can go is a treble. Maybe it's a quadruple. Who knows? But like we have seen how far Pep can go. I haven't seen how far Arteta can uh, can go, and it's been five years, and you've had opportunities to win trophies in the past, and you haven't gotten it done. I know that you won an FA Cup, what was that, four years ago? Um, yeah. I think that it's not fair to compare him to Xavi because Xavi Alonso, first, he needs to get done winning the Bundesliga, and then he needs to come to Liverpool, and he needs to... I, I think after like the first half of the season, we'll have a much better perspective on what he could be. That's even if he's the guy who comes in. I hope he is. Um but it's it's a difficult conversation, and I think that there are people who have justified reasons why they want Arteta out, and there's justified reasons for why they want Arteta in. But I kind of think that this is like his ultimatum season. I need to see him win something because this is the best chance that you've had. I know that last season you you had a, a, a massive you know lead in the title race, but that was kind of like your first time there. So if you bottle it, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like this is their first time down that road. This is the second time, and. Mm -hmm. You have a really strong team and you're in really good form. You have the most momentum of the three teams right now. You can continue to keep that momentum going. It's not unreasonable to say that you can't lose another game this season. It's not unreasonable to say that you can win eight of 10 of your last uh, 10 league games. So you got to get it done. And if you don't get it done, then I don't think that it's even fair to compare Arteta to someone like Klopp or someone like um, Guardiola, or potentially if Xabi Alonso wins the Bundesliga, someone like Xabi Alonso, because he's won a major league mm. title against a team that mm. has won what the last the, the last ten. So there's there's a lot of unknowns here, and um, personally, I don't know if if if, if Arteta is the man to take you to the pinnacle. He might be the guy to bring you to the last step. And then you need to go call, a, you know, a, a bigger Sherpa to carry your huge backpack and take you to the top. Um, but I guess only time can tell that. And I'm not a genie, so I, I can't say if our Arsenal are going to lose nothing or, or or win something because I think that both are very possible. Yeah, 100%. In my opinion, Arteta is showing that he's learning, he's adapting. The problem is how patient can the fan base be? How patient can they wait? If he doesn't win this season... And is it likely that he won't win this season? He might not win this season because he has tougher fixtures. But do the fan base can be patient? And when does this patient end? The patience end. What I mean is that next year, or is it the year after? When does it stop? When does it have to be? Now you have to deliver. You have to win me a trophy. When we start going backwards, that's when the patient stops. So you, but but that's that's backwards. But technically, yeah. you already have. Technically, like no, if you're going to compare to last season, we're in, we're in the Champions League quarterfinal for the no, first no, time. No, no, they haven't. Yet. They haven't gone backwards for a couple of reasons. Yet. Number one is that you guys are sitting here telling us 
that Arsenal can get a result against City, and there is a possibility. See, okay, fair, so, fair, right? Fair. So that means he actually made the team better than last season. I have to sit here and admit he literally made the team better than last season at the end. Yeah, we didn't see it in the beginning, but he did. Yes, they aren't in the same place as last season because they aren't seven points ahead. But if this team plays the team of last season, they'll beat them. That's my opinion, especially what? now. Wait, fair. what? Very, very fair. Hold on, hold on. What? You think this Arsenal team beats last year's City team? No, no, last year's Arsenal team. Oh, yeah, I, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement. Right. Well, fair, we, have to look at, we have to look at the standards. We're not, you know, we haven't got Champions League heritage like Liverpool. We haven't got, we haven't won the Premier League at the Emirates ever. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, no, no. I'm just looking at the standards. Don't, you can't talk about, you can't talk about let when him, can Arsenal him, fan be him, patient? Him, Are they going to lose their patience after this season? Like I said, Mo, if you don't see a progression from every single season, that's when you start questioning the manager. Have we gone forward from last season? Yes. Did we go forward from last season for the season before? Yes. Have we gone forward every single season? Yes, we have. So if we get into the Champions League semi-final, we, we miss out on the Premier League title, that is progression. That is going forward. We have to see progression from every single season. So if next season, we win the Champions League or we win the Premier League, but we don't win the uh, like we don't get into the final of the Champions League, whatever happens, we have to win a trophy next season. But this season... Okay. If we get to a Champions League semi-final, if we just miss out on the league title, that is still progression. You guys can say, "Oh, you have to win a trophy." That's not progression. I'm sorry. If not you this see your season. team going not forward, that is progression. L listen, I, I, I'm I'm going to say this, and you you guys might think I'm wrong for this, but if you if you lose this season to Pep and Klopp, I don't think you should be looking at Arteta in any type of way. Arteta finishing third to Pep and Klopp, I don't think the fan base should be having a madness and, and demanding more of that manager. I think they should be calm and, and realize there's there's greatness in, ahead of you guys, but you guys have a future. Yeah, you can you can you can say you can say that, but you guys said last season my United had a better season than Arsenal because they won the League Cup and Arsenal didn't win a single trophy. But we saw as Arsenal fans that we're going forward. Winning a trophy. Can Having a better season and progressing are two different things, though. Hardware yeah, is what you play for. Right? Well, fans, fans think that winning a trophy is 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 equivalent to uh, progressing. It's not. Sometimes what? winning a trophy can be happiness for you in that moment, but you have to look at the squad. You have to look at: Are we going forward or are we not? Yeah. Well, okay. But, it, it, ahead, it's they it's are, it's they completely, are completely different. different. Yeah. Yeah. It, exactly. It's 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 entirely based on perspective. Like like. There is no one size fits all for how someone is going to view Arteta or Klopp or Pep, right? Like it's it's all based on what you value. And unfortunately, many Arsenal fans value trophies over literally anything else. And the fact of the matter is, is that in five years, Arteta has won, has, has won has won has won one FA Cup. But regardless, I, I think that you're at that moment where you have the chance to do either one. You have a great chance to do either one. You cannot fall short now. You have to win one of them. You could win the Champions League. What the League. fuck are you, you How is that even possible? What, what is this? What? You're putting what you, pressure what? on Arsenal to win a trophy this season? Yeah. Why Why? Why would they? Why no, would no, they don't do that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. No, and and uh, the way you said it, don't do that. Don't do that. Because we, you have, why do we you have, have to win the Champions League? Why do what we is have it? Are you serious, Mike? Oh my! You're, you're, you're not. No, no, no. Listen, you're not. You're I'm not, not saying, understanding. I am not. You're saying not. That they should this win, but what the way you're saying it is how. I, this is how I'm hearing it, Mark. Mike. Okay, okay. Hear me okay. out. Hear me out. Yep. yep I'm hearing ahead. you must win a trophy this season, and if you don't win, it's a failure. Is that what you're saying? No. What I'm what That's I'm trying to do. Across. What I'm trying to do is explain the perspectives of Arsenal fans. I don't care what Arsenal does. I'm not an Arsenal fan. I don't give a shit about Mikel Arteta. I don't care about the city of London. I'm a Liverpool fan. I care about uh, Merseyside. What I'm saying is that when it comes to the fans, you're going to have the group that says, we're in a position where we're first in the league and we're in the Champions League quarterfinal. We need to win one of them. It's been five years. We've had, what, 700 million. If Arteta can't do it now, can he ever do it? And then you're going to have the other people that say, well, you know what? It took Klopp, you know, three seasons, four seasons to get into the Premier League. It took Klopp this amount of time. Like, we're there. We're almost at the pinnacle. I mean, Klopp lost the Champions League final before he won the Champions League final. And then 
you know, Why he won the the, the 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 Premier League. I, I don't know. I'm sorry, but <laughs> listen. Regardless, I'm just trying to explain the different Arsenal fan uh, Arsenal fan perspectives. Personally, I don't care what Arsenal do this season. I want to win the league, and they're in my way. So I hope that you don't win the Premier League. And whatever you do in the Champions League doesn't matter to me because I'm in the Europa League. So why why do I care? It, it makes no difference. Honestly, if you win the Champions League and I win the Europa League, then I will care because I'm gonna have to beat your ass in the Super Cup. But until then, the Champions League makes no, makes absolutely no uh, no difference to me. I'm just trying to explain from an Arsenal's fans' perspective. That's all. We'll see. Let me do the super chats before we move on. African Cat is saying, "Dude, PGMO and VAR and referees twerking for City, and you want us to say uh, we are sure winning it? Corrupt league." Well, that penalty at the end was absolutely a disgrace, to be honest. What penalty? Uh, the penalty against uh, McAllister and Doku. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever, whatever. And it's not you cheating, by the way. I'm going to say it again. It's not you cheating. It's Corrupt just incompetence. Crazy. It's incompetence, not corruption. Yeah. It's incompetence. They got scared. They didn't have any balls to call it. But Did, did, did the same foul not gonna... happen the game, the, the, the next game, and they, they called this the exact same way? Did yeah, McAllister yeah, not give the foul to someone else the next game and they, they didn't make the call? They, they uh, the it's not the same. Uh, the Maguire thing, not the same at all. Not the same at all, by the way. At all. At all. Not, even, at, not all. at all. Number The number one thing I have to tell you is that no. McAllister touched the ball first. That's that's the biggest difference. Number one. Number okay. two, studs up, not side foot. How Maguire hit that foot, it was side foot, not studs up. To chest. <laughs> So they're completely okay. different. So right. it's different. Okay. Um, Tarun, easy for Liverpool fan to say he expects a title since Klopp is leaving no matter what. If he was staying, would you still say the same and call it a failure if Klopp failed? Mike, that's for easy you. Easy for Liverpool to say him, uh, he, uh, if, he is, if he was staying, would you say the same and call it a failure if Klopp failed? So is he saying that if, if Klopp stayed Would this you have season... the same stance... If Klopp wasn't leaving, would you have said that if we don't win the league, it's a failure? If Klopp wasn't leaving, yes, no. Uh, but he, 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 no, no. Even if Klopp were here, even if Klopp were here next season, we need to win every season. Like we're 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 at that pedigree where I'm 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 a listen. We're talking about mentality here, right? Like technically on paper, it's a failure. Like if you don't win the league. It's a failure. You failed that objective. That doesn't mean that you had a terrible season. That doesn't mean that you don't have anything to build on. That doesn't mean that you can't take positives from it. But objectively speaking, your goal as a top three team in this league, Arsenal, Liverpool, City, the perennial title contenders, right? Your goal is to win the league. If you don't win the league, your league season is technically objectively a failure. So that doesn't failed, mean he failed seven out of the eight seasons he was here in the league. Technically speaking, yes. I mean, there are 115 charges to to explain. What does that have to do with the league? Yeah, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm just. Mike, I'm, I'm, don't, no, no, there's no reason for you to bring this up. No, no, there is. Listen, listen, it. listen, listen. Hold on, hold on. There is no reason for you to bring this up. It's well, just whenever, an excuse on the pitch. Listen, and I don't want to do this now. Fans, I'm just wanted to call you out because every time we speak about Kyrgyz club. The first thing you mentioned, Mike, is 115 charges. You never mentioned anything about pressure. You I just, never I just, I, I just no. said that technically all it was a failure. All you mentioned is that. No. I just said, mentioned. I, I no, just no. said that it was a failure. I, just, I literally no. just. But then, said why did you have to word. mention the 150 to justify the failure? Is that what you're no. trying to do? No, <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just, I just love not. taking, I just love taking dibs at City because City are cheaters. When I say a failure, but the other guy took steroids. So I'm justifying my failure. Hold Is on, that hold what on, you're doing? Man. No, I'm just I'm just taking All a right. dig. I just, at, wanted, at, I just wanted to clarify. Mo, let me say at this. A, at a plastic say this. club. Any Liverpool fan. What does that mean, a plastic club? What does that mean? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to stop here. What does that mean, plastic club? What does that mean? Can you what explain you to me what does that mean, plastic club? Pumping money into something. Avoiding uh, financial fair play. Okay, it's unproven yet. Okay. So I mean, you can't use that argument. So anyone, that's, anyone, that's anyone, objection. Oh, okay. that's not be that. You can't that's use that. I'm but, sorry, but but no, 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 base, no, no, base... no because I want to know my because him calling Man City a plastic club. I want to know what that means. What does that mean? The plastic. Gonna, club? We, we, we can all we can you're... all agree Man City a plastic club. Come what on. does that mean? You're... Can someone define <laughs> freaking plastic club so I can something know that... what I'm arguing against? Okay, something. 
yeah, that was nothing before and that got generated from a... What do you mean nothing before? Was there a club called Man City before? Man City, oh, before no. the Qatari owners were irrelevant. We so Arsenal agree on before that. the banks, right? Were irrelevant, okay? That's absolutely... That's absolutely After it. they got billions of pounds... They're irrelevant to, to the club. title, You're yes. talking... You're, you're talking... Of you're talking to that club, they became okay. relevant. That's it. Simple, Mo. So, so when 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 Arsenal were were funded by were were bank funded, well, then before, what? Then nineteen oh two or something. But it doesn't matter. See, see, the problem that, is because that. we lived. That's what I want to understand. Is that um, because we live now? We call it that. But when it happened in the nineteen twenties or the nineteen fifties and sixties for Manchester United, we called that not plastic. So, is it because of the time? So, hold on. If Man City continue, and I want to understand you, Dawood. Inshallah, you will have kids. If 50 years from now, 40 years from now, you have kids, and Man City are still successful, will you still call them a plastic club? Let me just get that straight, because that will actually straighten everything. <laughs> let me, let me no, get that straight. See the answer. The See the answer. You're asking a question where you want the answer to. I know what, you, what answer you're looking for. I know what you're answering, because if I say yes... Yeah, I'm not like, looking for any answer. I am absolutely... Looking. No, what they're doing now, what if it gets proven? No, no, no. Answer my question. Oh, my allegedly, what they're doing, what they've been doing has the wood, been illegal. The, the, the and Mike, the wood and Mike, don't beat around the bushes. 30 years from now, and that will be 50 years since Man City were bought by the Emiratis, right? Mm -hmm. 50 years from now, will you still call, if Man City kept the success, will you still call Man City a plastic club? The answer is a yes or no. It can't be. It can't be yes or no. It yes, can, it can be. be. It the actually only can is, be. The only That's the question. They got okay, their fine. money yes. decades ago. Yes, so yes. I will. Okay, that means Arsenal are a plastic club. That means every club can in I, England can I answer the question? are a plastic the club when the money was, was no, here. It's as simple as that. Your definition is that. What the thing is, what is, is that Arsenal wasn't charged 115 times or something. Like I know that I know that you're gonna say, but it hasn't been proven yet. But ultimately speaking, if anyone in the world gets accused of doing one thing 115 times, they are far from innocent. Actually, like, they haven't been. So get your facts straight. They haven't been. There are some charges, yes, repetitive, okay. but not 115 okay. times. And let me just tell you something. And this this is I'm gonna end because this is not about the 115 charges, right? All I want is that when we mention Jurgen Klopp, the majority of people say 115 mm -hmm. charges. Nobody talks about anything else other than this. Nobody I, I, talks I, about anything else other than so this. I preface no. anyway, it. Anyway, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on from this see. because I need to end the show in the next that two was, minutes. That was, that, was, that, was, that was the manipulation there from you, Mo, was crazy. It's Mo not crazy. manipulation. I'm literally using your logic. Southgate no. for Man United saying, love the salt. LFC don't need another club. Need a better coach than Arteta and Southgate. LFC giant club will run night and day when club took over. Pep off soon, maybe uh, soon if the hundred, maybe sooner if the hundred fifteen charges pop. Yes, Southgate, maybe probably you are right. Uh, probably you are right. I know Martin wants to come on, but Martin, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna move on from the hundred because this is not the day. To discuss that, I just, I just want to say one I thing, was just Mo. responding. Yes, let me do this, and then I'm gonna let you respond because I I need to move on from the hand because we need to to finish the show. The Mancunian mm -hmm. way, Martin. Thank you so much, Martin. Apologies, Martin. I would have had you on, of course, with all my my pleasure, but I really don't want to have even five minutes on this. I just wanted to explain to Mike that what they are doing is is just wrong about the money. It's they're right. A club being bought is. Is right. The fact that they are successful is a different story. Pep will extend. He ain't leaving. Sorry to burst your bubble. He hinted already. Yes, Martin. We know that. We mentioned this. Uh, Tarun Mohan is saying Pep will leave to manage England or Spain. Not now. <laughs> not now. It's not going to happen now. Go ahead. Go ahead, Vito, no. before I end. Okay. All I'm going to say, two things. The, the 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 sheer fact, the mere fact that you guys got your money decades earlier and got your success, and now you want to look down on a club that's getting the money at a later date and want to poo poo on it is shameless. Now another thing too is ask these other rivals whether they're finishing second to the 115 charges every year. No, they're not. 
your manager hasn't finished second every year. He's fallen out of that. So question your manager on why he hasn't been the serial winner against other clubs that are inferior in terms of ownership and manager. That's what I would would throw out a Liverpool fan. And you Arsenal fans as well. Is, is, is Arteta that guy? Or even before Arteta, were your managers that guy? No, because they're finishing behind not only my manager, other managers. So relax with this 115 because you're losing to a lot, a lot more than that. That's all I want to say. By the way, nobody is denying that City are successful after they were bought. You will never see a City fan saying otherwise. Yes, they won a trophy or two or three back in the days, but the the success that we're witnessing now is literally after they were bought. It's as simple as that. Nobody's denying that. But what, what, I, what we're judging is, was it what, what they did, was it legal or not? Yeah, and that's, we'll find out. That's, exactly. that's a different story. Exactly. Yeah. That's a different story. And, and, and you know and, what? And, 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 and if it wasn't, then everything after it is void because you were literally built upon the foundation. You no, know, I have another argument again is that and people don't yeah, like so it, do but I. I'm not going to say Which it. is fine, which is fine. I have which another argument. Yeah, anyway, uh, listen, people, this has been absolutely a brilliant and a fantastic show. I want to shout out to all the guys that super chatted the, the channel and made the conversation happen. Jerome, Nilot Pal, Jamrook, Andrew Wright, of course, Ryan. Uh, uh, Martin, of course, the Mancunian way, JJ Lloyd, uh, African Cat, Tarun, Southgate for Man United, uh, and Tarun again. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, everybody. Watch. I know, guys, that we can get to 400 likes right now, right? Right now, we can get to 400 likes, right? Mo is a city fan when, inco- when convenient. Yes, I am a city fan when convenient, Liverpool fan when convenient, and Arsenal fan when convenient. Absolutely. Mike, Mike, don't let Mo get away with it. Listen, yes, listen, listen, friend. listen. This, this is, this is, this is way. You know, I asked you a question. I asked you a question, and you guys were trapped in a corner, and you didn't want to answer. Plastic club. Listen, I, I just, I don't want to go stepping over any lines. Just to me, pa- uh, plastic club is just passionless, right? Like I just, I, I look at the word plastic. <laughs> I, I, I look at, I look at what, what Manchester City did. I see a sheik. He comes in, he buys every single trophy that there is to buy. Yes. Oh, maybe other, maybe, okay, maybe other teams. Guy clown on. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. This other teams, good. other teams well, and other sports, other teams and other sports have done the same thing. This is a very large conversation. I do have to leave because I have, I have somewhere to be, but regardless of that, this is a whole different can of worms. And to me, wrong, plastic things fine. mean many. You are which is just listen, listen, You're listen, just this is, this is this is this is this is no no just because okay. Thing. Hold on, yeah. Mo Mo Mo. I'm not going to stand for that because I literally prefaced so it. So why do no. I have to stand no. for what you say? Because, because why do you have to? St- why do why do city fans have to? Stand will you allow for me to speak? Say? No, 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 you no, allow no. me to? Why do you have? Why do city fans? Uh, why do city fans have to stand Mo, for what you say? You glossed. You glossed over what I what I prefaced my statement with in saying that yes, the one title in however many seasons is a failure. I said that, and then All you right, just completely right. ignored it. You completely ignored it. You just took my words. You threw it in one ear, and you threw it out the other, and all you heard was one one five. I said that it is technically a failure considering the fact that we finished one point behind however many times. Yes, on paper. It's a failure, but everything with a failure needs context. Okay. But I will give you that. Sure. One in nine, whatever. One of everything, whatever. Could it have been more? Should it have been uh, should it have been more? Yes and yes, but it wasn't. And and regardless of that, I'm gonna appreciate to the heights that he took me and from where I was and the shit that I was digging in. And like I, I have to be appreciative for what he did for me. But yes, we had many failures, but so have so have other clubs in all different eras of this sport and all other sports. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I'm done. Anyway, thank you guys. Appreciate everybody that watches. Oh yeah, guys, I trigger you, right? I trigger you. I trigger you, of course, all of you, because I say what's in my mind. Yes. Brilliant. Yes, absolutely. We'll see you guys soon. And we are out of here, people. Thank you so much for everybody watched us. And uh, I hope you got triggered.